hey guys welcome to the scholar online youtube channel the channel that is all about learning before we get into the tutorial for today i just want to get through some very high level administration things just remember to like this video that you're watching leave us a comment let us know what you think of course liking our videos and leaving us comments helps us a lot in getting this content to people that actually need it all right if you go to the bottom of the video that you're watching just open up that description box just click on it it will open up just like i did and over there you're gonna find a lot of useful information so if you hear me say i'm going to link it in the description below that is where you're going to find the link over and above that i'm gonna try and do some timestamps on videos timestamps help you navigate through the video of course my videos are very long so i try to sort of timestamp little parts and pieces what i'm talking about in a different section so that you can just jump over to the sections that are relevant to you you do not have to watch the entire video the way the timestamps work you just click on it and then it's going to fast forward you to that section of the video and if you come back in future of course use the timestamps as well and remember uh, my contact information email address uh you know social media stuff website is also available in the description of the video and you can get in touch with me of course don't get in touch with me emailing me your errors i'm very uh, happy to help where i can in certain things but of course be reasonable with that all right and let's get right on to it with today's video meta ai llama 2 release that has uh, recently gone out i'm gonna go through that here with you today so if you watch this video you're gonna have a good understanding of how to at least get started with using the llama 2 model what is out there what works what doesn't work i have to make a disclaimer before i move on that I have not done this before. I haven't, I mean, I've done some very high level preparations, but I haven't gone through the steps of actually going through the process. So I'm going to be going through the process with you. I suppose that will also give you an indication of how easy or difficult it is to work with this type of models. I'm excited about the release of Llama 2 model and the fact that Meta has made it available for use or on an open source basis, which means that it is licensed to use for private, even commercial purposes, which means if you wanted to build a product that you're going to sell to the market, you're more than welcome to use the model for free without having to worry about a lot of other things, you know, that, you know, you're going to get sued or anything like that. Okay. I must, um, indicate that, um, uh, by all articles that I've read, so far on this llama 2 model what i'm what i'm picking up is that it is definitely not going to be as good as the Ch chat gpt or gpt 3.5 and gpt 4 released by OpenAI. there are some comparisons out there and you can try and research those and find out for, and, and and decide for yourself you know sort of the levels but for what i've researched is it's not going to be on that level but maybe you don't need something on that level maybe it's still good enough at least for something that is open source i'm excited because uh, you have to pay for the open air api everybody knows that so if i could find a model that maybe is not as good but maybe it's 90 percent as good and it can still do everything that i do on the paid version and i can run it on my own cpu and then i don't have to pay the ai cost i mean i will go for it no matter what you know so i'm curious to see what uh, llama 2 can do before we get into the downloads actually let's get into the download first and then we'll do other things while we wait right here on camera to see how long it actually takes right to get through this process i actually went through this sometime last week when it came out like i think a couple of weeks back i think two weeks or so i can't remember and i actually went through the process of applying because even though the model is open source you still have to technically apply to meta to be given access to it because there's a process where you're going to fill in we're going to go through it with you right here on this on this on this video and you're going to get a link back to be able to download and that link only lasts like 24 hours so you must like do the application when you're ready so i wasn't ready for the application i wasn't even sure how long it was going to take and i actually just applied and then they immediately sent me back the download link and then i was like okay wait i'm not ready so i'm going to wait for when i'm ready to do this so i can go through it with you okay so let's do that first so if you go to this website i will put the link in the description of the video that you're watching right now but it is ai.meta.com and then it's a slash llama that is two l's a m a i think that okay large language model Okay, <laughs> L L M 
l-l-a-m-a -A, right but i'll put the link in the description of the video so go to that website and then you will you will be on this page that i'm on right now and then i want you to just like right at the top where it says download model just click on that i'm gonna try and see if i can open it in a different tab so i can keep this tab open because it will take you to a form where you can actually do the application to be granted the access to the model so i'm just gonna put in my name then after you've done that, just go to the bottom and go through the license agreement. Of course, read it in great detail. I've read it before to save you time on this video. And then when you're happy, just click I accept and say continue. So um, then it will say Lama download request received. Uh, thank you for submitting a request. We will email you with more information regarding your download to stay up to date with the letters on Lama 2. Um, you can subscribe below. Okay, so you can subscribe um actually i don't mind subscribing but then it's taking me to some other page with a whole lot of information so i think i'll do that later but i'm curious to subscribe so i can get informed of updates okay so while we're waiting for that the time now is about 10 37 i'm going to write that down so that i can see how long it takes to get access this is my mailbox there you go it they gave me the link immediately third i mean like within a second all right so you can see already here um these are the models available and i'll explain to you um what they are and you know what they do and what they mean and and so forth and so forth all right so you, you get a similar email like that and you can see that it's just like it was instant so it, it's not even the one day that they say it will take so basically I'm not going to bore you with stats because you don't need to know all of these things to use the model. I'll just give you what you need to know. There are basically three models that are available in the Llama 2 sort of, you know, there's three models. There's a 7B uh, models, the 13B models, and, and the 70B models. The B stands for the size of the model. The model is, is like, you know, I think it's billion. It stands for 7 billion and 13 billion i could be wrong but uh but it's it's sort of like the size of how big you know the sort of the 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 the, the, the character not the characters but like the you know like how big of data and stuff like that the model was trained on and how many parameters it has and stuff like that so to cut a long story short and to summarize for you to get a better understanding it's just how efficient the model is going to be so the bigger the model the better the model is at understanding because obviously there's more parameters there's more data it can answer questions better than a smaller model but depending on your use case and and the size of because a bigger model as well will be slower a bigger model will require bigger space to store the information a smaller model might be faster might require less space so there's a lot of like pros and cons it really depends on your use case obviously you'd want to think the bigger the model the better but obviously you're going to need more space and and more efficient cpus you know more memory to be able to run a bigger models all right and let me just get started you're not going to run this on your personal computer because i get this question all the time but what do you just install on your personal computer you just don't don't want to do that so definitely consider getting a virtual private server so that you can experiment and do all of these things on you know you can get like five dollars for free which means you can like pretty much use it two months without paying for it and then after that if you decide you don't want to proceed with it you can just get rid of it but don't try and run some of the projects i teach you on your personal computer because you're going to mess your personal computer up and some of these things they take so much space that then you won't be able to do anything else on your personal computer okay so get a virtual server for these kind of things that you can just delete when you're done with or replace with another server or whatever I will put a link in the description below to Digital Ocean Virtual Service, which I've worked with from the beginning of my development journey. I actually was started on a Digital Ocean server, just like you watching a YouTube video, because I learned a lot of my, my programming on YouTube. And I never looked back because honestly, it's one of the best platforms out there. And in terms of cost as a developer, especially when you're learning the link that I'm going to give you, if you use that, it is an affiliate link. I must say that if you use that affiliate link, uh, you get two months free on digital ocean you don't pay for a whole two months and then after that then you will start paying but uh, obviously in too much you will know whether or not you really want to proceed with them or not and at the same time if you proceed after two months then only i get like a small commission fee for referring people to them okay then um once you've got in your server you just sort of like you know follow the steps that i'm gonna be going through i've got my server running over here you can see it's ready to go and i'm gonna try and follow the instructions that are given online and see if i can get this model to operate and run okay so 
You'll see on the email that there is this um, also Lama 27B, there is Lama 213B and Lama 213B. So they are showing you actually like the different types of V, but you'll see there's also the chat. There's Lama 27B chat, there's Lama 213B chat and 70B chat. So these are actually just variations of the other main models that are specifically fine-tuned for chatting. What that means is that these models um, are already sort of like yeah, sort of pre pre fine tuned to be able to handle chat conversations. Now, the next link I'm going to give you is a link to Hugging Face. If you've seen our videos, we've worked with Hugging Face before, especially when we were working through some of the open source chat models. All right, maybe I'll do a video in the future where we go through some of the available ones that are that are good because I haven't looked at Hugging Face in quite a while. Uh, but Hugging Face also has a link to. Um, not a link, but it has the Llama models there. And they've got an instance where they have actually, um, what you call it, created a chat interface so you can test out the different models, all right? So I've opened a window for the 70B chatbot. You can see the 70B chatbot. This would be equivalent to the 70B chatbot, which is the biggest one. So you can see how it answers specific questions. So that's the first one. And the second one, I opened the, the, the 13B chatbot. And then the last one, I opened the 7B uh, 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 chatbot. So basically, I tried asking the exact same question to all three of them. And, and look at a response so I can I can get an understanding of how those chatbots are going to answer back when I when I ask specific question. So the seven B chat you can see over there. I asked it, tell me a joke, right? And it, its response is, apologize, I cannot generate a joke that could be offensive or inappropriate. I'm just an AI. My primary goal is to provide helpful information responses with ensuring a respectful interaction. So you can see this is not sufficient. It's not even going to answer my question because it's not even answering, it's not even telling me a joke. I didn't say give me an inappropriate joke or there's nothing inappropriate about my response. But you can see that the model has been trained not to provide inappropriate responses. So instead of the model not providing inappropriate responses it's telling you that i'm not supposed to provide inappropriate response as well so it's not really doing what it's supposed to do it's telling you what it was told to do you understand so that for me it's a useless model i can't do anything with that if you can't even i mean i'm going to just leave it there right the 13 one the 13 b chat i uh, asked the same question tell me a joke okay so it says okay sure i'll be happy to tell you a joke here's one that is self-respectful and positive why did the computer go to the party because it wanted to have a bite all right so you can see over here that 13B chat is a little bit more advanced than the 7, 7 billion chat because it's at least it tells you a joke, but at the same time, it corrects itself and reminds you that I'm not supposed to be inappropriate because it's trained not to be inappropriate or it was maybe given the instruction that it should not be inappropriate. So it's not only um, providing an appropriate joke, but it's also explaining its training. So that might also be a little bit tedious to people because you don't want a joke. You don't want your model in every single response also explaining why, what is in its training with respect to giving you that response, okay? But anyway, that what that's what it is. And then the 70 billion chatbot. I think this is the closest that you get to chat GPT actually in terms of the model because you ask it to tell you a joke and then it exactly tells you a joke, right? Without even going into, because in the background, some of those parameters, the 70 billion parameters, it's also being, it can track and tell whether this joke is appropriate or not. But you'll see over here with the seven uh, billion chat, if I revise my question and I say, okay, tell me, a tell me a um a non non offensive and appropriate joke right so if you ask it to tell you a a a a a a and of course uh, it it will it actually shares the joke right because it's able to uh, determine that the question you're asking is not is not offensive and not appropriate, but you have to provide it with that. So, so this model is not necessarily a useless model. You know, if you prompt, you're prompting well, you know, and maybe if somebody was really uh, asking to say, 
if somebody were, if you were running a chatbot here and somebody said, you know, tell me a joke, you could always add to the prompt, make sure the joke is appropriate and whatever, whatever, whatever. you know what I'm saying? So there are ways to work around these kind of things, right? Um, and the model still works. It's just, it has lesser parameters and it's less able to determine, to determine the sort of content in a, in a way that, that fits its training, that it has to make sure, you know, by, and it makes sure, but sometimes not providing answers and things like that. So that is just something to think about right and um just another test i just want to also test is proficiency in um i'm going to just go straight for it and go into coding right and i'm just going to try and see how well it is in terms of coding and i'm going to ask it a python question so i'm going to say you know um you are a you are a act as a python programmer as a python programmer um right code for um, a python i ask this question all the time to chat gpt and it always gets it right right python django a uh, model that is called a profile it extends the user model and has extra parameters like bio profile image image and what else um i don't know address right so let's see this is a, a not a trick question but it's a programming question so this requires that the model needs to have programming capabilities and chat gpt would have been able to answer this question perfectly and you can see the 70 byte model can do that just as well and it got the model right you can see it imported user at the top it uh and it it then extended the profile by making it in by using one-to-one -one field with user and then it added the text field and a profile image which is an image field and told it where to save that and it added an address as a text field and uh, you know it has so this is 100 percent correct if you ask chat gpt this question it will give you the exact same answer i mean we can even test it now so but i'm not going to because i've tested it so many times it's one of my test questions i ask um, the models all the time when i want to so i'm going to ask the same question to the 13 byte um to the 13 byte chatbot i know this is taking a bit of time but i think i want to go through this process because as a developer i'm taking you through the process i'm doing this for the first time with you and this is a process i would undertake um anyway doing this so I'm, I'm just showing you the whole thing and this is a learning channel you know i guess sometimes questions people like you know you know you talk too much and whatever you know like there's billions and billions of videos on youtube and you can pick any video you want to watch but my channel is a learning channel and i like to take people through the process step by step it is usually long videos that is why i put timestamps it is up to you whether you want to learn with me or whether you want a quick 10 minute video which you can surely find on youtube either way so i'm just going on and on and on talking because i want this model to finish so that i can see what is going on here okay it's still typing so um while it's still typing um let's let's put it into the seven byte model the same question all right and then um let's see what it's going to what is going what the seven byte model is going to do okay so the seven byte model mm, it's pretty decent okay um it's pretty decent um so why why can't i go okay there you go so it 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 it's pretty decent but it's not right right because you can see at the top here they are extending the user model from uh, from over there but they didn't import it at the top so this code is actually gonna give you an error if you try to run it okay and the image field is okay so it has models dot so it, it imported models and then it has it doesn't have the string version so this is actually incorrect right so i wouldn't try and use a seven byte model to write code and then the 13 byte model on the other side 
uh, let's see at the top it imported correctly so it knows it needs to import user and import a model and it created a nice space in between the import because it's how you would write the code and it has specified the maximum length um where required within the address it didn't specify it but that's not important and here it told you where to upload to i just want to compare the code to that the server model and this can be blank as well which sometimes is useful by the way right so the model this model will you know will pass you know this is correct and and it goes further into explaining exactly what it did and what the user does and and it's it's got a little bit more detail um so the 17 byte model i think you know depending on the size of the server and things like that and depending on your use case for example right um i think you can get away with the 13 bytes from what i've seen this is why i, I went through the process with you to test it so um so running on a 10g i, I just want to know what is a 10g i'm just gonna google that what is a 10g um it's a it's a graphic card by nvidia launched in you know um um so i'm going to ask this question to chat gpt by the way um i'm going to go to my chat gpt uh, because i wanted to explain in a little bit more detail okay i'm going to say what is uh and what are the specs okay because i just want to know so you know sort of i want to know ram and um what are the processing power so um okay so this doesn't have that okay okay so basically chat gpt doesn't know what this a10g is but uh uh you know yeah it it refers to a uh a, a thing and according to to this it's it's a card okay a10g all right by nvidia so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna use one of my tools this is one of the tools i built because it's got access to the internet and it can do better it can do research so if you go to my tool um it's called mobile gpt and you go to the main menu which comes after every message by the way and I'm going to to pick research report and I'm going to specifically ask it, um, enter my title. I wanted to research for me the, the professional graphics card by NVIDIA specs and so forth. All right. So I want to know the specs of it. And then it's going to ask me, do you want a short summary? I just want a short summary report. And then it's going to go and run a short summary report for me so this takes a bit of time because it actually goes and searches the internet and then it goes and finds data and information on your whatever it is you're requiring but at the same time it gets all of that data from the search that it has done and then it compiles it into a sort of summary report from everything it has found i'm curious about the specifications of this because i want to know the service that i'm going to use is it going to be enough okay so there's the the research this is now real time your research from the internet um i mean in the background this mobile gpt app that i built it does work using the open ai engine but at the same time it i've given it an extra boost with giving it access to the internet so that if i want for specific questions like this and i wouldn't get an answer from chat gpt i can get an answer from it right so let's see so um the number of cores um uh, uh graphic cards da, 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 da. okay so this is a gpu it's not a uh, it's a gpu okay so it's not a cpu so that's a bit um that's a bummer but anyway um so you can read more about this because i'm not going to run this on a gpu i'm going to run this on a cpu but what i like is at least the this one over here um um it's it's running on a cpu okay so i should be able to run this model on a normal virtual server right so let's let's see okay let's see so i'm with that i'm gonna leave that uh research that's done in chat gpt so let's get into installing this right so now that we've tested um i think i'm gonna try and see if i can install the 70 byte this one I don't know if it's gonna work i'm gonna try um and and then you will see here in this video if i've done it then it will mean you'll be able to to do it as well and just keep in mind that it, that there is um obviously the 70b and the 70b chat okay so let's read this email in detail okay 
The models listed below are available to you uh, as a commercial license holder by downloading the model you are agreeing to the terms of conditions. Okay, click there and then make sure you understand what the terms are because it could be something like after you've built your, your, your app, then that app belongs to Meta or something like that. So just <laughs> go and read the terms and the fine print, okay? Once you've done that, you come back here and then with each model download, you'll receive a copy of the license and acceptable use policy. Also read that so that you don't get sued or you get your app blocked for something like that how to download the model visit the repository on github and follow the instructions on the readme okay so this repository i'm gonna try and click it and see where that takes me um follow the link okay i know i'm going outside of facebook then this is the repository and i've already gotten this repository open over here by the way so um that's okay it's the same one right facebook research llma that's the same um research okay so i've got that repository and then follow the instructions there when asked for your unique custom url please insert the following so this url is the one that is unique and custom to me you will have to do your say the same application you will get your own url and as you've seen it comes almost immediately all right uh, the unique custom URL provider will remain valid for uh, for a model uh, download 24 hours and download each model up to five times. So this this link will only work for 24 hours. Tomorrow I need to request the link again. But you can see it's a very simple, right? And you can download each model five times. Okay. Helpful tips: Please read the instructions on the GitHub repo and use the provided code examples to understand how best to interact with the model. Okay. You can find additional information about how to respond or whatever. And then if you need, if there's any issues. So basically, the only thing that's really important in this email is this download link. All right. Cool. So now we have the download link. Um, let us go back here and read the instructions, which are the ones over here. All right. So let's see. Okay, we are unlocking da 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 observed issues that are approach download. Okay, so how what do you do? You need to request a download link which you've already done, and then you need to um, uh, make sure that your link starts with uh, download.llma.net, which is what our link starts with download.llma.net. Okay, so we've got the right link, and not with L Facebook. Maybe this was an older one, and and there's something new. Okay, once you're approved and you've got your download dot you're good to go make sure that your system has got wget and md5 sum okay so you need to down to, to to install these things on your system okay and i think i've got it in my notes over here so uh, um um sudo upget update so let's start by um um running this command okay let's see um let me just ask chat gpt um just 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 I know the command, you know, but maybe you, when you watch it, you might want to be able to um, sudo upget update command on Linux. Um, um, asking coding questions is one of the things that chat GPT should be good for, uh, mobile GPT at least. So you can just say sudo upget update. All right, cool. So, I mean, that's exactly what I typed in there anyway. So, <laughs> but just showing you how smart. So, okay, you need to put in your sort of password. Obviously, if you're working with, with, with Linux and you work with command line um, all the time, you would know that um, if you're going to run an app, get command to install a package. Hmm, this is not my sudo password. Just give me a moment so I can get my password. It looks like I have forgotten my password. There it is. There you go. Got it. I haven't used this specific server in a while, so psh, and it's got one of those very weird passwords. But it, you can see that it's a lot. It's a lot of updates it's going through because I actually haven't used it in quite a while. But it's fine enough. One of my best, you know, VPSs. Um, it's got very good. Um, it's got a lot of space. I think I'm only utilizing one percent of it. Hence, I decided to use it for this project. So I can see. So once you've done that, then you can install wget and make sure you have it. All right. Don't worry if like this package already exists and you run this command, it's not going to break anything. So run it anyway, uh, just to make sure that you have it, 
okay so uh, it looks like i did not have it so you need to have these two commands uh these two things installed in your linux system before you get started uh both wget and md5 sum okay so that's good that has been installed and then let's do the next one um hmm let me just ask what's going on here this is probably not the right way of installing this um so let me ask chat gpt on linux um just give a moment aha uh -huh. on linux you can use the package manager specific to linux uh, for debian and for red hat okay so so this is the one this is how you install it so call utils let's try that okay good okay okay so i already had it like i said if something is already existing you run the installation it's not going to break anything anyway so that's fine so let's continue with our tutorial so i've so let's let's go back let's start from scratch so we're gonna call we're gonna s https we're going to copy this and then we're going to do git clone okay git clone and then we're gonna paste that all right it's gonna clone this and then we're gonna clear that we're gonna ls in there and i'm gonna try and see something here um so after i've cloned that we are going to then um go back to the instruction to the instructions and we'll see over here you need to make sure that you've got w and this installed right so let's let's just double check that these things are installed i know i installed them but let's just double check and i think we can do that by saying which w get and it shows you where w get is and then we can try and to do the same for that md5 sum by saying which md5 sum and you can see it's installed user bin all of them are installed and we went through the process of installing it okay so once we've done that then we need to run this uh, uh download script okay i ran it before nano in here okay so enter the email the models da, 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 downloading less acceptable usage policy it's supposed to do that um downloading tokenizer and then it goes and downloads the models and then it uh, um it does all of that pre-sign url and then it says you are done okay so this is the part where you download the model but you can see it's only really enter the url from email aha uh aha -huh, uh -huh. okay clear all right so let's let's try this again download sh doesn't run sudo download sh doesn't run um ch mode the file okay download sh right and then download sh hey button download sh aha Enter the URL from the email. Let's copy this email, this URL over here. The entire URL. Okay. Let's enter it there. All right. So after you've entered the URL, then it asks you select which model weights to download. Okay. So I want to download the, 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 the 70 B this one. And I want to download the 70B chat. Okay. There you go. Thing finally finished installing. And I have to warn you, before you attempt this installation, make sure that your virtual server has got enough capacity. So what happened, I can just take you through the steps. It basically downloads a total of seven a total of seven let me just go to the top 
it downloads a total of seven um what you call it um what are these uh, there was a name in, on top of it uh where is it now i can't see it now but like this um dish dish where is it um the different sort of um oh, where can i see the models that it downloads okay and each and every one of them also this was initially at the beginning and then um they each have about 16 gigs of of because i was watching it as it was downloading and it would go through the percentages of 16 gigs and it would start from one two three four five six all the way and then you have all of these um um what you call um like there's a couple of things it's downloading here and in total it took 20 minutes times seven so I, about two hour, over two hours close to three hours that it took to download everything so make sure that your virtual server has got enough space so i would say you know 250 gig that's the the ssd space that i've got on mine maybe you want to have something like 250 gig of space or else it's going to obviously fail somewhere in the middle and then you're gonna have to start from scratch on a bigger machine so this is why i always tell you at the same time you can't try and do this on your own you know personal computer it's going to take all the space on your computer you know and i think it's just over 100 gigs it's not 200 gigs you know if you look at it in the end but i want to check later on you know the actual size that was downloaded i think i have my virtual server uh here that i'm trying to have a look at the percentage here you can see like it's uh, it's now 60 percent of the server that has been um has been taken up by this you know um let me just wait for it to finish to finish sort of loading and then i'll just show you exactly how much space it took to install the 70 you know billion um 70 b sort of you know model from um you know facebook meta llama 2 so this takes a while to load the page just give it a second and maybe we'll come back to it but the point is it takes a lot of space right so here here are the parts okay there you can see later on it checks the parts to make sure that all the parts are loaded correctly so actually it's eight parts because it starts from zero one two three four five six seven i was looking at the numbers but i didn't realize it started from path zero so maybe it's eight times 20 minutes times 20 gigs so it's actually quite a lot of space that it takes let's see 150 gigs so I've used up, up more than 60% of my space. I know when I started, I had looked at this. When I started, this was like 1%. Remember I told you I'm only using like 1% of this server. So I've gone to 60%. So this is 150 out of 250 gig. So your space of whatever the machine you are using to download, if you want to go for the 70B model, you have to at least have that amount of space available. That's just the space it takes. We're not even into the sort of the memory and the processing capacity when you actually have queries. And we'll test that obviously as time goes by, all right? But that's why i do this on the channel for you so that you can actually see what it actually takes you can see me doing it i did it right in front of you you can see exactly what it took you can see what i went through you can see the inputs that i put into the machine and so forth and so forth so now we're going we have we're up to this so we've checked this we've installed uh downloaded the data and we didn't see error so i think we i hope you're good so the next step obviously would be to run this pip command pip command is just going to install everything that's required for python to run but obviously we need to do it inside of a virtual environment because where we are right now we're not in a virtual environment we just ran the command on you know if you look here we just like you know on the main um you know uh, uh, root of the application so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to do virtual env and i'm going to create an environment i'm going to call L L M A L L A L L A m a e n v all right and it's gonna go and install the virtual environment so obviously if you've never worked with me before you might not know what this command is but it's just a command to install a virtual environment in the location that you are right now if you've never seen me do this before you've never done this before you can some watch some of my previous videos because you need to have virtual environment already installed in your, your machine to be able to run that command if it doesn't work when you run the command just google ask ChatGPT how to install virtual env all right and then i'm going to do sudo no it's not sudo i need to then activate um the virtual environment Okay, that command activates your env and then you'll see once it's activated 
you can see it in brackets over there on the side so we're good to go then now we can actually run the, the command itself all right so you can just copy it as it is like you can just copy it there all right and then you can just uh sort of paste it so now you're running pip inside of the virtual environment so whatever the lab the python libraries it installs it will install them in the current location where you have activated the environment okay so um, let's just do that and, and wait because I think this also takes a bit of a while because there's a lot of things that it has to so I'm probably going to stop this here as well and uh, fast forward it to later on. While the virtual environment is installing, let's, I mean, the, the, the packages are installing, let's have a look at what we're going to do next, okay? So now you can see, if you look over here at the top, there are two main files. There's an example chat completion.py and example takes completion. So these are sort of files that have already been created and there's some code already in there and I'm just going to go through it now and see what's in there. So this is example chat completion. So I'm going to actually start with that uh, example chat completion because I think that's the chat uh, function or at least the demonstration of the chat function. We're just gonna go through the code and see what is in here. And it looks like this model was built to be similar to what, you know, already uh, GPT-3 and GPT-4 type chat models, how they work. You look like you can you sort of, you need to initialize, uh, initiate the, the sort of the function by describing certain things. The sequence length, the generation length, the tokenizer path, where is your tokenizer, the temperature. And I think the temperature has been preset as 0.6. You can change this, of course, you know what the temperature does. It affects the sort of randomness of the model and how, you know, the model will be, will get more definitive or more, you know, sort of random answers. And then you've got the sequence length and so forth and so forth. Then you obviously the generator, that's the initiation function. It builds the llama model with these variables that you've given it that have been defined at the at, at the top there. And then we define some dialogues. It looks like um here dialogues are sort of like the conversation, you know, like with a chat GPT when we used to enter a a list of sort of like, you know, string or things that you can that you can do you can have a role of a user and the content and it looks like it works pretty much on the same structure you know i'm glad that they did it that way because if we had to now learn a whole new way of doing things with llama 2 it would have been harder but if you've worked with chat gpt apis before and you work with this you can see this makes sense this is how we used to describe the conversations to the gpt3 models we used to have a list of objects and in that object you would have you would define content whether it's a role of a user or the role of an assistant or the system role the system role is used to describe how the model must behave the user role is a specific prompt the user is asking and then the assistant role is the role of a response that would have been given so you can see the first list of messages is just a user saying you know what is the recipe of mayonnaise without a system prompt without any response you know and then we're going to see how uh, the, the model will respond the next one over here you can see it's a list of objects there's a user role who, who is saying you know i'm going to paris what should i see and i think here we're sort of training the model we are giving it an assistant response or maybe this is an existing conversation where the assistant already gave a response and the user and then you saved it some way and then you're feeding it back because now you're having a follow-up question you know and then the user is asking again well you know what is so great about number one this is a follow-up question to what the system had already answered so if you had like a, a list of, of you know of, of sort of like objects that are describing the conversation you can see here the user asked a question i'm going to paris the assistant responded and now you're following up with a question about number one so it's giving just examples of what you can do the next list of objects is just a system and a user where a system says, you know, answer this with haiku, you know, and then you ask what you, whatever you ask, you, you, you ask, it's going to say haiku, whatever. And then the next one is the system. Again, always answer with emojis. And then, you know, whatever you ask, maybe it's going to give you an answer, but it's going to give you the answer in emojis. I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to work. And then the next one is, it's just a system and, 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 and content. And then the user asks a question. So this is typically what I would use. This is typically the structure I use when I do chatbots is that I always start with the system command, which is sitting there to tell the AI exactly how to behave. Hey, what you are, you are an assistant, you must be honest, where, where you can't answer, you must say I can't answer, you know, um, where somebody is asking something and, you know, that is uh, unacceptable or unethical, you must say that, okay, you, you, I cannot answer this, this is, so this is just a way of prompting the system so that the, so that the, so that the model knows how to react. 
and then after that the user asks and whatever the user asks the model will respond so you can see this looks like it's a list of examples or a list of possible scenarios interacting with the model and perhaps we're going to go through the all of them one by one i don't know let's see what the rest of the code is saying and then it looks like then there's a generator so this is now the generator function so this is simple similar to the chat gpt you know chat completion and then you enter all the different variables in there so here it's entering the dialogues which is a list of messages you know in the chat gpt language and then the length and then you define the temperature and then the top p and then which are the typical sort of variables inside of a of a chat model and then from there you run uh, your 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 thing and and if you look at what is going on here it looks like it, this is going to run um this different conversations because you can see it's taking in the dialogues and the results and the results are going to be for every conversation maybe it's going to run a result which is for every conversation maybe it's going to run that and then it's going to give a response and then it's going to zip it and sort of you're going to be able to see per dialogue what was the response i mean i'm just looking at the code it looks like that's what the code is doing so when we run this when we run this file, this is what it's going to do. So that's exactly just what this file is doing. But with observing what this file is doing, you should be able to now learn how to now build your own, you know, a thing. You should be able to now, like you can see over here, what you need to do is to build a generator. From what I can see now, what I need to do is to build a generator, okay? I need to define a generator by using Llama build, and then I need to define these variables, you know, the, the token uh, path and everything to build that generator. Then once I've built the generator, I need to then do generator.chat completion. So this is like where we used to like have with OpenAI, we would say import OpenAI, and then we'll say OpenAI dot chat you know, chat, whatever. So now we are just building it ourselves and, and the model sits with us, you know, so this generator, this Llama, whatever, we are importing it from Llama, which is what we've just imported now, all right? And and so forth. So this is very interesting. I'm very, I'm very excited to actually, uh, you know, uh, play, you know, play this out and test this out and see what we get. So I don't know if this has finished. Yes, it has. And you can see that we downloaded a whole lot of stuff, okay? So let's clear this and let's, uh, I think we're ready to start testing this now. Hey, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, let's go. Let's go through uh, where will we be now. We've done this and then this inference and then there's a pre-trained models and then the fine-tuned chat models, which is the chat completion. And that's the one I want to test. So we basically just want to copy this, right? And I think I had copied it and I pasted it over here. So it's the exact same thing and see it uses torch run to run the example text completion. Is this the example text completion or so i don't want to run the example test completion i want to run the chat completion okay so let's look at the example chat completion so this is the model i want to test um so let me just paste it here to see what i'm going to run there so it's touch run uh and proper node one example chat completion so that's the chat completion file and then the llama 27b chat so this model i don't want to run the 7b chat i didn't download the 7b chat i actually downloaded the 70b chat so let me just see how it's a llama 270b chat so it says 7b chat i think i can just put a zero next to seven and then it will say 70 and then that will be the correct model that I downloaded. And then you have the a tokenizer path. You define what it is, which is a tokenizer.mode, which I think it should be here on in, in, in the in the files. Um somewhere in there. Uh tokenizer.mode. All right. I don't see okay. I don't even know how the, all of this stuff works, but I'll take time to study it later on. And and then the length is five one two and whatever. So I'm just gonna this is what is provided in the documentation in the in the GitHub. I'm just gonna run that. You know, I'm just gonna run that and and see what happens, okay? Okay. Okay, so my error is um, trace back, I think GPUs, all right. So, um, dush dush, no GPUs found. So the, the, I think maybe it's the system I'm running this one. I'm trying to run this on a virtual server. So perhaps this is the wrong system to run this on. Perhaps I need to run this on 
on a GPU instead. But let me see. Where is it? There was something very specific that said no, no GPU found. I just wanted to find that. Trace back, chat completion line 83 in module, fire dot fire. So when it was firing the thing, the component, through an error and code an update and trace. And um, the llama build that the error comes from trying to build the model um, with this dash dash uh, runtime error. Process is only supported with GPU and no GPU is found. Okay, so this is the problem. Okay, so uh, process water water is only supported with GPUs and no GPUs are found. Uh, error distributed. Okay, so basically the installation went well, but obviously I'm, I don't have any GPU, so I need to get those. So what I'll do is I'd perhaps we'll do that next week, but at least I've taken you the process of through the process of trying to do this on on a CPU, and clearly it's not gonna work. But why did it work here? Because I, I saw that here. So it says a CPU upgrade. Okay, okay. So this is a CPU upgrade. So obviously, I have to learn how to run these things. You know, I'm just like you. I'm learning online. So so bear with us. But of course, what we're going to do, keep, keep tuned. Because what we'll do next week is that I'm going to find a GPU. And then I'm going to tell you exactly how and where I found it. And then we're going to run this again uh this time on the gpu and then we're gonna make sure that it works and we're gonna run the 70b model and we are going to build our own ai model with lma2 okay so guys see you guys next week i hope you enjoyed watching and you learned something even if it wasn't how to make the model run but stay tuned next week we're going to do that next week